them. <gasps> he left them for a water walk. <laughs> Welcome back to the Coco Invitational. This is an upper bracket finals. And Klaus is opening up the match here. And what an attack he is bringing. The players have to do at least one creative attack each. And Klaus is starting with 10 giants, 10 super giants, and a skelly donut going on that clan castle and the monolith at the same time. I think he also may have gotten, was it an expo there on that left or a double ricochet cannon? No, it was an expo, which is pretty nice value because he's got that flame flinger already ready on that left hand side now in the meanwhile his warden has cleared out beautifully cleared out all of those defenses and buildings on the north hand side in preparation for entry onto this town hall area however we might be walking a little bit he uses an invisibility spell because everything was walking now this king does take quite a bit of damage but that invisibility spell was perfect now we get that town hall down. King is walking back out to the right hand side. Queen still gets that town hall down, uses her ability, gains some healers here, which will help keep her at full health. They are taking some damage against this multi inferno. So he does freeze it to keep two healers at least. And he's sending in those giants here with the royal champion and those healers for support now they're going in for that scatter shot on the left hand side queen unfortunately lost all of those healers will be going down royal champion how much damage can she do he does still have the flame flinger going on that left hand side will be able to give him some additional troops however there's a lot still remaining the scatter shot on that right hand side the double multi inferno let's see how much the royal champion can do though all oh, the healers taking so much much damage from this multi inferno he's using using a heal to heal the healers and it's actually working but unfortunately the eagle artillery strikes did too much damage world champion she will have her ability here but that giga poison oh it's horrible for those hogs now this is looking tough world champion does still get the multi inferno down though We've got a bunch of peckers on that left-hand side. But unfortunately, it is not going to be enough for Klaus to end this one off. He has some more cleanup there on that right-hand side. A bunch of giants still remain. The Royal Champion did clear up pretty nicely. Unfortunately, did miss this expo here. These peckers still clearing out building to building, but with only 24 seconds remaining. Oh, tough. It's tough. It was a little mini pecker army down there on the south-hand side that we gave him, but not much time left. He did rock up a decent amount of percentage in here because since these players are doing some creative attacks, when they do go wrong, they don't really leave too much room for error. So we'll see. 88% two star, is that enough to give them a lead? Because the problem is they're up against stars and Kazuma, which is Klaus's own teammate. So they know how to play. Kazuma, how will he return? Now he has to beat the 88% two star mark to take the lead. Now he's brought in 53 sneaky goblins. Oh my days. He has a bunch of wall breakers and those yetis in here for some support and I spy a recall spells. So this will be interesting. That's for sure. Now, he did clear out one of the mortars on the right-hand side. Again, to secure the funding and the preparation for the flame thing. And the flame thing, it can even get this eagle artillery down before going for some more of these defenses. As you can see, this expo being taken down as well. And there goes the recall. That's the setup done for the flame flinger on that right-hand side. Warden on that north-hand side. We've got a Yeti on the left, which is going to help clear out some more. Warden has been redeployed, though. So now he's going for the other Expo. But I don't know how much that this Flame Flinger can do. Like, is he going to go all the way to the right-hand side? This uh, Mortar is still up at the moment. But as you can see, these buildings are all pretty close. So they will go down pretty quickly because the aura from those... Uh, Flame Flinger shots will be able to do damage on all of those defenses on that right hand side. 
The king had the perfect funneling from the Yeti that we saw earlier, which means the king can go in here and clear out that scatter shot. Got some really good value, pulled those clan castle troops, and those sneaky goblins have been coming in all ready to clear out the storages for the town hall takedown. That's what that one invisibility is for as well. Now, the queen did take quite a bit of damage. They, he did use one of those invisibilities there, I think, to keep that queen alive and her ability, and he secured the town hall already. Super minions out of the flame flinger on the right-hand side, and right now, he's just being really patient. The warden still has his ability. He's taking some damage here, though, but he's holding on. 55 seconds on the clock. The there's still a quake, two freezes, two rages, and the Royal Champion still to use on this attack. Royal Champion's coming in from that right-hand side, getting this multi-inferno down. Warden ability active here as well. This is looking strong. And to be honest, all he has to do is freeze the monolith, rage the royal champion up as she jumps over these walls. And this is gonna be Pipsqueaks. He even has the Hog Rider puppy. He won't even need those freezes because the hogs will be able to tank those monolith shots. Nicely done, 18 seconds, five buildings remaining. He's freezing the king. Cleanup is going on that left-hand side and Kazuma is coming in with the first triple of this match. Temper is up. Now he's on Kazuma's base with a bowler bounce, getting that town hall down. And one of those infernos, it looks like. Usually you see the monolith on those bowler bounces. However, still getting that down is some pretty decent value. Getting an inferno, always nice to see. Now on the south hand side, oh, entry is already open. Headhunter helping out for the enemy hero here, getting that king down. We got the queen walking around that left hand side. We'll clear up a little bit more before backtracking into the nearest building, which will push her in towards this compartment as well. So queen and the king are going into this area here. We'll be able to get quite a decent amount of value down, getting both of the expos. We'll see how much that will continue. Now on the left hand side, he's already sent in the warden with those hogs, it looks like. We're using that warden ability in dice and early. Du not double book, actually. We have the life gem on here, so extra hit points on those troops on the left-hand side. Now, unfortunately, they do die off here, so how are we going to go into the middle of the base? He does still have that royal champion. There goes the royal champion ability, which will be able to tank. However, the nearest defenses are pushing the royal champion away from this monolith. The multi-inferno doing quite a bit of damage on the hogs from the hog rider puppet. We have a bit of distraction from the P.E.K.K.A. and the Golem on the right-hand side. Queen is still alive, but this monolith looking scary on Kazuma's base. And unfortunately, we will have another defense. How much percent can Temper rock up on this one? Having another defense on this one, this might be problematic for Temper and Klaus because this could be giving two stars over to Kazuma and stars in the finals of the upper bracket. Now, bear in mind, the winner of this match will be jumping straight to the grand finals. The loser of this match still gets a second chance to make it through. We're actually clearing up pretty nicely, but there were so many major defenses, the Multi Inferno and the Monolith, the Ricochet Cannon. It's gonna be tough. Higher percentage than the previous one that we saw but still gonna be a defense. Nice try. He's trying to get as much percentage in as possible, but we'll be ending here at 92% two star. Double elimination bracket means whoever loses this will have to just do an extra few rounds if they want to make it to that grand final. $1,000 on the line from our amazing sponsor, Clash Ninja. If you go to the Clash Ninja website, you can also see the bracket so you can see how much that these players did to be here in the upper bracket finals. 92% two star from Temper. Now if stars triples, they will hold two stars over Klaus and Temper's heads. Stars is bringing in pretty much, it looks like seven of everything. He looks like he's got seven headhunters. He may have had seven healers. Seven wall breakers, probably. There's one opening on the left-hand side. Lucky number coming in. 
seven heroes. Yeah, if you count, if you count some of the players. Now we've got the Warden Walker on the south side. Gets the multi inferno, which is huge. Now Flame Flinger has been deployed. Find some hidden testers, but the Quake was here to activate the Town Hall because it was not a defense until now. So the Flame Flinger can see it and get it down. Now on the left hand side, Stars is just breaking open wall after wall to get into this left hand side and get this multi inferno down. And he still has three more to go. King on the right hand side with a bit of funding will push him closer to the scatter shot. There goes one of the wall breakers as well. Will there be another one? Probably to open up the scatter shot compartment. Or maybe he just uses that gauntlet, can do some quite some damage over these walls. Now the Flame Flinger did take a little bit of damage here, I think, from the enemy King. That's what those headhunters were for, though, to protect the Flame Flinger. The King goes off towards the Town Hall, though. That scatter shot stays up on the right-hand side. Queen finally gets that multi-inferno down. He's done a bit of a hero charge on the south. Queen charge on the left. Royal Champion goes to ability. Now she's actually going for a lot of splash damage here. So he opts to use that Warden ability there to protect all of his heroes and some of those hogs from the Royal Champion ability. Now the Royal Champion's pathing towards the monolith. He's getting a little bit distracted. Queen does get the retarget here after the... Fox makes the Royal Champion invisible, but this is looking solid. Look, Star still has two freezes and an invisibility. His heroes are still alive with those healers as well. He still has even a rage in the mix here as well. Nicely done, Star's two star advantage. He wants all of the stars on his team. Almost 300 barbarians. Klaus, <laughs> what? How many can he bring? Flame Flinger starting off. Now there is a mortar. That's why he's scattering in those barbarians to keep the mortar distracted because the Flame Flinger is in the danger zone. He's protecting it very, very well. One by one, the barbarian gets dropped to get that mortar shot on as it distracts it. And the Flame Flinger gets it down. And now it's in a pretty good position. There is an Expo on the left and another Mortar there on the right. But it's not in the troublesome area just yet. Now on that left hand side, walls are already open. The Queen's going to set a bit of funding here. Which is going to push the King into the Scattershot compartment. Followed by that Warden of course. Poison Spell Tower going to do some damage, but he counters that with the King Gauntlet ability, doing heaps of damage here on that left-hand side. The Single Inferno locks onto the King. Warden ability was the Fireball as well. Did a bit of damage, gets the scatter shot down, but the Single Inferno is just going to charge up on these heroes. Now, the good thing is, with all these Barbarians, the Single Inferno shouldn't be too much of a problem. However, he has to make sure he gets those splash damage down because not only is it going to be a problem for the Barbarians, but he has 11 bat spells and he's using them as a bat bomb on the Multi Inferno and the Eagle Artillery. Now on the left hand side, there is a Wizard Tower, but he's distracting it perfectly. He has freezes going off on that right hand side, looks like from some ice golems. Queen has yet to get the Town Hall down though. She does have her ability, which will make her invisible. Give her some healers there as well to help her. The bats clearing up around the right hand side and going for the Monolith, which is huge for the Queen queen in this compartment that way she will not take damage the bats do even get it down 45 seconds and bats oh my goodness klaus with almost 300 barbarians and bass bats gets it done on his own teammates base stars stars base goes down klaus gets the first triple for his team this is exactly what he needs at the moment because there are already a few stars behind is it going to be enough though to get those triples going they really need a defense now 13 giants 13 wizards five headhunters five healers and a bunch of loons for support here as well 
Kazuma is up next. Wall break is already opening up this south and side compartment. We've also got some cleanup already going with the giants tanking for the wizards in here as well. Coco loons are being used by Kazuma to test for any potential traps because he does not want to lose any of those healers because he's going for quite the queen charge with a bunch of these wall breakers. She can do pretty much a lot of damage here. Now, they are taking a bit of damage from this air defense. That's what that uh, we're protecting the queen here for. Queen took a little damage there as well. Doesn't want her to go to ability. Now these clan castle troops get pulled. Poison is here, raging the queen and freezing, but it's not enough. Queen goes to ability here regardless. The clan castle troops on Klaus's base was just a little too much for the queen to handle. He did keep her alive though. Was trying so hard to keep that ability, but very unfortunate. Now he's going for some more cleanup around the outside to make sure the queen does not walk and she backs in and gets this multi-inferno down. In the meanwhile, he's also... Ah! He's also got cleanup on that left-hand side, which will get that queen to push forwards. Now the flame flinger has a pretty decent pathing there as well, but there is a hidden Tesla sneakily popping up and it's going to force the flame flinger open. This could be huge for Klaus and Kazuma because I think the plan was for the flame flinger to take the town hall. Now the queen, she's still alive. She's struggling though. The sweep is actually helping him out by keeping the healers away from the multi inferno. Now the problem we have is he has just to make sure that everything gets to the town hall or it's gonna be a one star. Now it's looking good at the moment because he still has a lot of those hogs from that royal champion ability. He's freezing the town hall here as well. The royal champion is still going through here as well. She has already used her ability though. That's why the hogs are still here, but it's gonna be enough. Gets that town hall down. Clean up on that left hand side, 35 seconds. This was a little bit risky with the Flame Flinger going down, but the recovery was perfect. Kazuma, one building left and gets another three star over on his side, which is uh, gonna be a bit of a problem now. Nine stars to seven. Temper with a giant arrow and he gets both of the multi-infernos down. Queen gets those healers. Oh wait, he left them. <gasps> he left them for a water walk. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a sneaky little queen ability. Gets both the multi-infernos and left the healers there for a water walk. Log Launcher is coming in from the southern side, which is actually going to get some really nice value as well. Doing damage on the Eagle Artillery. Is it going to be enough to get the Multi Inferno down as well? One Electro Dragon on that left hand side, whilst the Warden still continues on the right hand side there as well. Now the Queen's going to do a lot of damage here. And those Clan Castle troops, the Warden will be going to ability here already. He's still trying to deal with those clan castle troops. King and the queen on the north hand side entering around that town hall area. King will go in and actually be able to get that town hall down with his giant gauntlet ability. Now the warden is still alive, so he does still help out quite a bit with that raise gem. However, we just do not have that eternal tome. Now the world champion, she can jump directly over these buildings one by one to get them down. Hogs helping her out. Oh, I think we did get that. Was it the monolith that sniped off the Royal Champion? The scatter shot's low. The Warden still has decent health. Honestly, they get it down. Only the monolith still left. A few loons and the super minions on the right. Oh, nice. Tempo coming in with a triple on Stars' base. The arrow, the little sneaky trick, the recall that he did. Really, really nice. Temper getting it done. Another triple, which puts them at 10 stars. 10 stars is unfortunately gonna be their final score. So it's all about the final attack from stars. 
Anything higher, the safe two star wins them the upper bracket finals. Stars with the final attack. Safe two star means they jump straight into the grand finals. The losers of this match will be jumping to the lower bracket and we'll just have to do a bunch more wars to make it to the grand finals. They will not be going home straight away because they haven't lost a single match yet. Queen on that left hand side already raged up, doing some damage on this base. Now, Sneaky Goblins, he has a bunch of them. He wants to get the storages down so he can send them in for that town hall. Now the queen is protecting her very nicely. He saw that that single inferno was charging up the clan castle troops. Oh, he does get the single inferno down just in time. Still a lot of damage coming in on her from the scatter shot whilst she deals with that clan castle troop. The hop, we got that uh, pop, but we'll get that down pretty nicely. Sneaky Goblin testing for any traps. Doesn't seem to be any, so he'll send a bunch of them in with an invisibility to secure the town hall. Now, Queen's still going. She can get pretty decent value. Go for the Eagle Artillery there. He's actually sending in the, uh, the Warden up top with some packets to tank. We also have... Oh, it's interesting that he actually brought the Poison Lizard there. It'd be very nice against those heroes, all right? Or so, we'll see. At the moment, these uh, Peg is going to do a good job at tanking. King on that right-hand side. Royal Champion is actually joining the party there as well on that north-hand side. And he's connecting everything with a jump. So from here, they can get both of these Infernos and the scatter shot down. Get some decent value. King goes to ability there as well to try and cut everything off so they don't walk. Two Pekkas and the Royal Champion. They're still going astray, but Royal Champion can jump directly over these walls. That's all fine. Queen gets this multi Inferno down. We're distracting the Monolith here as well with those skeleton spells. At the moment, this is looking good. I mean, he's secured the save too. Clean up joining on that south and side with a bunch of Valkyries. Queen even still has her ability as well as the Royal Champion. Final major defense going down there. The scatter shot gets destroyed. Royal Champion goes to ability, drops some home more hogs on this base, and we'll be getting it done. Stars and Kazuma, they have put up an epic performance across the entire tournament. And they are just showing us again why that they are here. They end it with a perfect war against Klaus and Temper. And they're jumping direct, directly to the grand finals. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.